All right, welcome everyone. Um, this video, what I wanted to do was uh, spend a little bit of time in CyberChef and go through some uh, some different operations to, to create a recipe that you can use to iterate over a list of values, do some arithmetic on it, arbitrary arithmetic, and then convert those values to char code um, to get the, uh, the actual string that was obfuscated. In order to do that, you're going to take a look at this try.hta file. So I just happened to be uh, perusing some open directories uh, earlier today and, and came across these two samples. Now, it's probably no surprise that this hta file will download this putty.exe, which is snake keylogger. Um, but because I did take a look at the HTA file to see what was there and, and came across this opportunity to just spend a little bit of time in CyberChef, I thought I'd put together this video. So uh, once you've downloaded the HTA file, I'm going to just open that with Visual Studio Code. Um, you'll see I have some other tabs open here already. That's um, some, some later stage scripts here that we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, but with any of these scripts, you know, usually the first thing I'm looking for are, are big blobs of data like this. Um, there's not a, a, a lot of functionality here, so it would stand to reason that the, you know, this data is converted into the next stage script. And that's what does the, the more important thing. Um, now, you might recognize these or, or you might suspect that these are all uh, values for character codes or char codes. And you'd be right, but the, but the values are, are a little out of range. Uh, so if we look at the name of this array and just keep that highlighted, you'll see that it is passed as an argument to this, um, to this function. And if we just double click and highlight that, you'll see that this function is defined here. And the gist of it is that each character of that array will be iterated through. And here is a hard coded value that is assigned to that variable. So the value 32518, and that value is um, subtracted from the char code value and then it's converted to its character code. So simple enough, right? But it's effective in that we have to know what the this you know, somewhat random uh, value that it's subtracting is in order to do the conversion and actually recover the script. Now, I, I point this out in a lot of videos. There's probably a quicker way to do this. Uh, if I really didn't care about what was going on in the script, I might just throw this in a sandbox or, or execute it in a, you know, in a VM and, and, and capture the process activity and see what the result was, right? If it's a PowerShell script, we'll see the PowerShell command. Um, but uh, again, I've, I've run across this enough where I have this sequence of data that I want to loop through in CyberChef. So I thought this would finally be a good opportunity to put it to video form. Okay, so let's grab all of these values because we want to decode this. Um, so we have the data. I'm just going to copy that. We have the numeric value that we're going to subtract from. And one of the quickest things that I could think of was to use CyberChef because I, I don't need to necessarily script this out. I just want to, I just want to, you know, as quick as I can get to the data. Now, um, with CyberChef, so I'll kind of walk you through my, my process of discovery here. Uh, one of the first things I thought to do was just to simply split the values. I think that makes sense. That way we have a value on each line. We can operate on it individually and then eventually pull the results back together and hopefully have our, our next stage script. So after the split, uh, I was thinking that there would be an operation that we could go ahead and just do some sub subtraction on. Uh, and there, there are a couple, uh, but the, the, the subtract one in particular is the one that I think would work here. It will subtract the entire list. And so it was still, it, it wasn't operating on each individual line or, or piece of output as I was hoping. Uh, so like any good researcher, I went to Twitter, and, or I'm sorry, I went to, to search engine and, and just searched around a little bit just to see. I thought to myself, certainly this has been solved before. And I came across a, you know, a, a somewhat old tweet of kind of the same problem here uh, asked by uh, Execute Malware. And here was a solution offered by uh, Matt, not Max. And this was the, the idea here being that we will use the fork command. Uh, or the fork operation and add a little bit of data using a regular expression. So that was really the, the only kind of tidbit I needed. So using that as kind of the foundation for this next idea, I'm going to add a find replace. We'll use the um, dollar sign and a regular expression, and that will provide the, the kind of the anchor. And then we'll use a comma and 32518. I just couldn't quite remember that. And you can see now that we're adding that constant value to our output. Now we can use fork. 
And if you just hover over fork to get an idea, what this is gonna do by definition is split, split the input data up based on the specified delimiter, delimiter and run all subsequent operations on each branch separately. So this is kind of like perfect. Um, split delimiter is a new line, merge delimiter. Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. So now every operation that we put after the fork will be performed on each one of those outputs. And here you can see the delimiter. We just need to change that to, to a comma. And you can see, there we go. Um, each one of these results now has been converted. And this, this is a proper, or at least it looks like they're all going to be proper uh, base 10 character codes. Character codes. So now we can do um, uh, some from char code. And again, put that under our subtract. Uh, our delimiter will be a, a line feed and our base will be 10. And let's see, give that a second to catch up. And there we go. There's our power, PowerShell, not, or there's our, our command, our decoded script, what happens to be PowerShell. Uh, now, of course, we don't really, it's a little bit hard to read this. We could just copy paste it, take it to our terminal, or I'm sorry, to a Visual Studio Code or editor. Uh, but if we just change the merge delimiter, uh, if we remove our merge delimiter, now you can see the results from the operations under the fork are merged back. And we get, well, it's not clean, but at least we get all of the characters sort of concatenated back together. All right, so that's helpful. And that's really all we needed with chart with uh, CyberChef. So um, this is something that I find myself doing uh, often is having to look at you know, a chunk of data that's being manipulated. It's an array of data that's being manipulated in some relatively easy and, and arbitrary fashion. But I, you know, I certainly can't just look at that and, and eyeball parse it. I needed something like this. And I really didn't want to take the time to write a Python script. Although, you know, it, I, I guess that could have been a, a quick solution as well. Um, here we though, you know, CyberChef was able to do exactly what I wanted to. Now um, about the script, I went ahead and just uh, formatted that. So it was just a, a little bit easier to uh, to go through the code here. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, I mean, the obfuscation is just in the variable and function naming being, being somewhat random. We can see the same pattern of obfuscating some of those key strings. Um, the uh, you know this will be invoked from the command line, define several functions, and this will be then our, our essentially our entry point. Um, this function will get the app data folder and concatenate putty.exe to that. And then if it exists, it just goes ahead and calls this function up here, which runs through and based off of the file type, the extension, um, which that's what these characters are, uh, I suspect anyway. I didn't decode those. We could do those in a minute. But, uh, you know, .dll, um, .ps or .ps1, um, maybe .msi, I'm not sure, 100% on that one. And then just starting it, probably a .exe. In any case, though, um, it's going to start either if it already exists on the file system or with this else branch. You can see this method here. Uh, well, let's look at this one first. Um, this is going to download that file. Uh, so this is likely going to instantiate a web client. And, um, and then this will be the host that it pulls down from. So how is it manipulating that data? Well, very similar to the previous stage. There is a function here which has a hard-coded value. It loops through it, converts those char characters. So we can just take a look at that one just for completeness sake. So I'll paste those values in and go back here. We'll grab the hard-coded value. And all I should have to do is update this. And there we go. So we can see this is actually the same host that we, are, that we were on when we, we started the video. So there it is up there, just so you can see it. Uh, and then it's downloading putty.exe, right? So if it's already there, it just starts it. If it isn't, downloads it, writes it to the file system, and then goes ahead and executes it. So that's what uh, that's doing here. Uh, of course, now that we have the recipe updated, we could, we could just take a look at a few of these just out of uh, curiosity's sake. I said, I think that's a web client. Uh, it sure is. And let's see here, MSI exec. So what would that extension be? We'll grab those values and 
Uh, .msi. All right. I guess that one right too. I guess maybe I've done this before. Um, so there you go. There's some CyberChef. Hopefully, if you're not you're not familiar with CyberChef, uh, it's a definitely a great tool, something that I use, and I think a lot of malware security, you know, RE types use on a regular basis. If you're familiar with it, uh, hopefully this was uh, something that maybe you haven't used before and can add to your toolbox. So anyways, comments are open. Please feel free to leave some feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll talk to you all in the next video.